Hey, what's up? Hello everyone. My name is Marissa and today I have a very niche video that I'm going to be jumping right into. Today I'm talking about the dorms at Indiana University Bloomington. I just graduated this last May, which is crazy, but I was kind of reflecting and thinking about things I wish I knew before starting my time at Indiana or even like as it was going along and I was thinking about my dorm room experience and I had a really good dorm room experience um, but I met a lot of my closest friends there. I met my boyfriend that I'm dating now and a large part of that was due to the dorm that I picked. So I wanted to share the different dorms on campus and kind of their different vibes. I know it's probably changed a little bit, but this is just my insights. Of course, talk to other people, talk to upperclassmen or people you know who are Hoosiers, gonna be Hoosiers and learn as much as you can. So let's get into it. I'm looking at the website and there seems to be five neighborhoods, but when you're a student on campus, there's basically three. So I'm gonna start with the North neighborhood. All right, so starting off, we have Briscoe. So Briscoe is at the top of Fee, and Fee is the street that goes down towards campus, into campus. So it's kind of the farthest away, but it's closer to then the different sports facilities. So it's close to the football stadium and assembly hall where the basketball players go so this is where a lot of athletes live it's really nice it even has its private its own private gym it has laundry i think on every floor and i've only been inside once but it looks kind of like a hotel it's very nice so recommend this one if you're into sports because you'll probably run into players next we have foster which is a pretty big dorm i think it's under construction right now there's not too much to foster i'd say it's pretty basic but it is next to a dining hall which is very convenient and then last but not least we have McNutt which is a little bit infamous I would say um, when I lived there it was half Kelly Living and Learning Center so half business students and the other half was just McNutt. When I was a freshman four years ago like the North neighborhood was super fun it was known as being more social so it definitely had more of a party scene but like also where business students were so like party scene but also smart and like hard working and stuff and but since then um the kelly living and learning center has been renamed and also has switched to a different dorm so the main reason for that is because there was mold found in the building which tends to happen with limestone buildings and all the buildings at indiana are basically made out of limestone it's kind of like what they're known for so that was a little bit inevitable, but it was really bad. Honestly, I still think I have like lung breathing issues due to the mold I was breathing in when I was living there. So that's not good. But the class who lived in it after me, so the class of 2022, some class of 2021, they actually like collectively sued and got like money off of their um, room and board, which is nice, but that didn't happen to me. My reason for going into that is because A, you've probably looked into that if you've been doing your own research, and B, it's just good to know to look for that and be worried about that. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, now we're gonna move to the central neighborhood. So first I'm gonna talk about Eigenman. Eigenman is where the Kelly LLC, now the J LLC, is located now it's a pretty tall building and it's at the very edge of campus i don't really know why it's called central because it's like so far off but it's still a nice area and when i was a freshman it was known as being more where more international students lived so i guess that may be kind of changing but one of my best friends lived there and she had a really nice big room and you can have like four people in there, two people in there, like the lots of different options. And unlike McNutt, where it was like mixed, like boys and girls on the same floor, I'm pretty sure it's separated in Eigenman, but you can still walk over easily. So that's kind of nice. Next in the central area, we have Teeter. One of my other best friends lived in Teeter and she lived in a community where it was all people interested in the outdoors. So it was called Outdoor Adventure and they would go hiking together and camping and all those types of things. So. That was the perfect community for her and she really loved it. It's also a super ideal location because it's right in the middle of campus, super close to like the library and 
everything that's like important so <laughs> i also think the like honors living and learning center is there so check that out too next we have the union street apartments these are typically for upperclassmen but now i think even freshmen can live there they're apartment style so it's a lot different than being in like a traditional dorm but obviously the perk is that you have your own kitchen and then lastly we have right which if we're ranking the dorms i would say this one's probably one of the lowest because i'm pretty sure it's the only one that doesn't have ac and indiana has all four seasons so when you move in in august especially it's gonna be so hot and you have to basically just get a bunch of fans to cancel that out i also had kind of an inappropriate nickname i'm not gonna say all the nicknames for these dorms because i feel like they've been changing also this one's like weird but they call it the virgin vault because it's very separated the where the women live and the men live and you can kind of like get through it but it's like weird setup so that's why they call it that okay hi this is editing marissa um and i realized i didn't even talk about one of the other main dorms that's in the central neighborhood which is collins so collins is it's just like weird because it's like on the other total side of campus than eigenman so it like slipped my mind but yeah, basically it's close to the IMU. It's like a really, really beautiful building. Like it reminds me of like Hogwarts or something. So it's really pretty that way. But the people that live there are definitely a more alternative crowd, I would say. Like very progressive into like vegan food and like that type of expression, more like sustainability. Um, it's by like, the like sustainability school and stuff like that. It's also close to the School of Informatics. I'm totally slipped my mind. I've never been inside there, so I also just like don't know what it's like. But that's like the vibe I get from the people that I do know who lived there and like from what I've heard. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I didn't want to like totally that's Collins. <laughs> okay, moving on, we have the South neighborhood. So first we have Wilkie. I actually had a class in Wilkie and it's like very far away from McNutt. It's like the opposite edge of campus, but it's very nice. I think it has a lot of singles. Then we have Forest. Forest is where the best food is, in my opinion, on campus. They have a really good dining hall there. So if you like eating good, I recommend Forest. Next, we have Spruce, which I'm pretty sure is right by Forest. I could be wrong though. Yeah, this area was nice as well, newer, and I'm pretty sure that this is where like the future teacher living and learning center was, but I'm not exactly sure. You'd have to look into that. And then last I think that I'll talk about would be Reed, which is also very nice. It's closer to where the Jacobs School of Music buildings are. So if you like music, this could be a good place to live because that's kind of more of the vibe. They are also known for this place where you can get waffles. And I remember being able to like go and get waffles at like two in the morning if I wanted. So that's super fun if you like waffles. Other than that, there are basically only like off-campus options and like i'm seeing there's like a northeast option that i drive by all the time it's called tulip tree but i'm pretty sure that's for more like grad students with families but the point is there's a lot of living options and i just wanted to share a little bit about the dorms because i know people have lots of questions and they want to look it all up so i just thought i would share what i know i don't know if a lot of people will find this video helpful um it's obviously very niche but if you do, let me know. I could also make one about the different apartment complexes off campus if there's interest in that because I have some tea to share on that similar to the mold situation where stuff is oh, not always the greatest. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.